So this is Jim and Ben with DC Digital and today we're demonstrating kind of a unique uh, product whereas you can uh, set them up on a web page. These are counters. These are DC-25C-N and we put say N for network uh, dash term and then S dash S because they have switches that are locally. So it, these are network page. You can view them locally uh, at your individual where you have them set up and also on a web page. You can view where you're at with your count. And each one of the counters, and we're making quite a few, so we're just demonstrating four here. And you can set up how many on your web page that you've developed? 50. 50 of them, okay. I think the customers bought 41 of them. Um, but we're going to just show you four and go through how they function and how you can see it from any computer within your facility on just where the count is at any specific time. I'm just going to go through some of the functions of it. So uh, right now in hardware, so uh, they have, you have to have a server and connected to your network and then we'll go over that. And then each one of your counters is connected to the network. And then each one of your counters, what we set up for them is we have a remote uh, push button switch, which I'm not sure where they're going to put it, either at the beginning of the line or at the end. And then you have three push button switches. Uh, they're all environmentally sealed push button switches. The remote switches are just for decrement and reset only. So in case they make a mistake, the local push buttons have increment, decrement, and reset. And then all of them have uh, a sensor, and this is one of the sensors that we sell. The sensor comes with a bracket, all of our sensors do, and it will just increment up the count. So you can increment up the count there, increment up the count here. And then when Ben gets into the web page, he's going to show you that you can increment, the, decrement, and reset the count also via the network, and also do it, um, punch in a number if you want to just set the count to a certain value. Uh, all of the clocks are 14 gauge aluminum. Um, displays are 2.3 inch high digits and um, they all come with a teardrop mounting where you just knock them out and a terminal block for your sensor. There are uh, 12 volt DC, 120 volt uh, outlet that you would plug it into and uh, they're a wall adapter, so each one requires power also. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Ben and he's gonna demonstrate the uh, setting up of the network side of it. And um, here we go. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move the camera. Thank you, I'll have a seat and if you can put the camera on the screen. Yep. So this is just any, uh, this is a representative of any uh, PC, it doesn't have to be uh, anything special. There's no special requirements. Uh, to identify the devices on your network, um, they, they do ship DHCP enabled, which means that they automatically obtain an IP address from the network which they connect to uh, via the, the local router they installed. So not knowing what IP address they've obtained, we have a little utility called IP setup. Uh, this utility you can download from our website from this page. To get to this page from our home page, uh, you can either search directly here for IP setup, two words, and that'll take you to the, uh, any, any of these, this is the search results, and then you can take and go to any one of those products. The network products. Any, then, any one of our networking products, right? You can do it that way, or you can do it through the What's New, which is our blog site, and that's where the, actually, it's home. Yeah, I'm going to show them that. Both on the of blog, yeah. blog site, yeah. So here, you click on the IP ID software, and that'll take you to this page. Or coming from here, you go to What's New, and type in IP setup, and... Uh, in the search. Then click on this page and it takes you directly to here. Either of those two work. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you have, once you're on this page, you need to scroll down here to um, IP setup. 
Now you can get this IP set up here. This is an EXE. If your computer doesn't like EXEs, this IP setup has been zipped, and so it's uh, more friendly to some browsers that, that, um, we'll handle that want to put the EXE in a container. So mm -hmm. either way, you can download it is fine. Um, once you have IP setup downloaded, uh, it'll appear as a uh, envelope icon here on your desktop. You just double click it to open it. And now it shows you all of the local devices on your network, all of the SBL2E uh, devices, all of these network devices on your network. Um, four of these you'll notice are running DC Digital Counter Module, and one of them is running DC Digital Server. This is the box that you uh, want to pay most attention to, and for uh, the rest of the once this is all set up, this is the box you'll interface with for interfacing with the entire system. Okay. Um, so once you've selected that, you go ahead and hit launch web page, and it'll take you to this page, which is the home page of this server. So now you can uh, bookmark or add a shortcut to your desktop to this page so that you can easily refer back to it. Uh, with this page in mind, you, ha you, you also need the other devices registered to here. You can see currently we have zero counters registered, and we need to click System Setup to enter the IP address and name for each counter. It's going to ask us for our username and password. The default username is username, and the default password is password. That can be changed from network settings. You can change the username and password here as well as your device uh, networking uh, properties there. Once you're on system setup, you need to enter the IP addresses of all, each device on your network. You can enter a display name or one will be automatically generated for you. So here, uh, if you'll give me the MAC address for sure. number one there, so the first counter is... The last four are EB and 3D. EB, 3D. Mm -hmm. So we'll look here in IP setup and for this EB, 3D. And there's the IP address. 192.168.1.10. And let's just call this line one. As if it was a production line. Okay. Uh, the next one. Please. Uh, e A E B is the last four. So that's the one four address. So one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one four. And the next one is E A E A. So that's the one three. And that leaves the last one to be one one. Right. So we just want to stress that once you set up these static IPs that they're pretty much, that's all you need to do. You want to keep them static. Yeah, I, I do recommend since this is a large system and this particular page, you don't want to have to interact with every time you change the IP addresses. I do recommend that you set up the entire system with static IP addresses. So you're just going to do it once and pretty much um, that, that, that'll be it. Yes, all, correct. All you need to do. Correct. So you so have places for 50 slots. Once you have set up the system, and this is system only entails four, but you can have up to 50, you'll be presented with a home page uh, ever after that looks uh, this like this. And if you recall the counters uh, from the video, they had 0, 0, 0 on the first three and 20 on the last one. And so here we, have, we are given the the current count, and even if we change the numbers, so let's let's change them to something. Let's put five, and then maybe make this one nine, and let's do that one ten. Okay, so he changed that via the uh, button switches. I don't know if that's invisible in the. No, that wasn't. Uh -uh. So he changed the numbers via the the top mounted set switches, uh, and now when we refresh the page. You'll see that reflects here. Let's see if I can go ahead and show them what it, you know, 
there's there's what's re that's what the locally they're going to see when their when their sensor gets to that point obviously or when mm -hmm. they change it you know so he's he's doing he's activating the sensor so i'm going to show you what happens on the on the home screen or on the web page what will happen is it won't it won't change until they refresh it. So you go in, you open it up, you're, it's all automatically gonna show you the numbers. So if you have uh, a refresh button on your, on your toolbar, you can refresh it that way. Uh, on some systems, you can hit F5 to refresh. Uh, you can also refresh each individual counter by hitting this button, and this will refresh just that unit. Of, um, incrementing decrementing and resetting to zero. Okay, so you're automatic you're setting that and it's real time is going to be pushing it to Yes, correct. to the uh, So now I am incrementing the timer, decrementing the timer. It's a counter. These are counters. I apologize. I am incrementing <laughs> the counter, decrementing the counter and resetting to zero the counter and I'm also going to type in a set value and click the set value okay. and it'll It'll set that Okay, value. so you set it one for 234. You set number two for 234. And I'm going to go down to, and he's got 234 on there. Yeah. Okay. And that one. I you set, set like that three to 500. 500. Okay. Yeah. And so you can uh, keep track remotely of what's going on in line. You can also control it remotely um, by incrementing or decrementing to correct any count. Uh, that is, that is, um, or reset them to zero or reset them. Yes, correct. So, so the, uh, they do have the plus one, minus one and zero for each individual one. Now, uh, one last thing I wanted to show is if we go to one of the timers, one of, one of the counters by themselves and we launch that web page, we are presented with a very similar operating interface, but this is for just that one device. So you can look at them individually if you want to. Correct. And, you, and it's asking you for a password and username, which is username and password. So to set your devices on static IP, you will uh, come down to this network settings tab and enter the username and password. And then you can change those values here and then you'll come down here, select static from this drop down box, and then enter the static values there and change configuration. And that's to set each device. Uh, so you gotta do that first. You gotta set them to static first. I recommend it, yeah. yeah. So go into each device from your IP setup yes. first and set them up static. We already had them set up for this showing, but. Yeah. You, can, um, you can set them up uh, via DHCP and that's fine as long as the router is set up to assign each device the same IP address every time for that for a given MAC address. Uh, that's an, that will also work. It's just that if we change, for example, this device's IP address, okay, Within and, we don't, and we don't re-register that device with our server, when we go to refresh this page, we'll lose, that, that device will drop out. We have to go back to system setup, change it to 25, and now that device is back. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can do that, but that is time consuming. It's easier if you either set them up for static IP addresses or set your router up to assign the same IP address to Every each time. device. Mm -hmm via DHCP, yes. Okay, well, very good. Any other? All right, well, this is Ben and Jim with DC Digital, and we're showing uh, these DC-25 counters, C, their network, web page uh, linked, and uh, their terms so they can take a uh, sensor input. And uh, they also have local uh, push button switches so you can set them locally. Thank you.